hands are small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. Good morning from Siena, Italy. We are leaving Tuscany today and the beautiful Agroturismo Marciano. We just dropped our friends off at the train station and are headed for Umbria and then on to Rome. So we're leaving the countryside altogether behind. So we're taking over the helm of the rental car today as our friends move on. So it should be a pretty good, interesting experience um, for about a three and a half hour total drive time today to get us into Rome. We're gonna start by visiting a couple, uh, like one more hill town, a couple more hill towns, see what they have to offer on our way down to Rome. One of them is supposed to have a really, really cool entryway. Um, so I guess let's get going. Yep, let's go. We're back. Just kidding, Darren left the credit card, which is kind of important on vacation. Do you have it? Got it, this is important, Miles. Gotta get those miles. Chase Sapphire Reserve, don't leave home without it, or your agriturismo. Of this morning we got a little bit later start than we expected and we came up on our first town of Orvieto which is in Umbria but because we're running out of time and we've got to get to our Airbnb in Rome at a decent time and drop off our rental car we decided to move on to our second stop which we're most excited about. Yeah this next stop is called Civita but we stopped first in the town of Lubriano for a view. Yes, so a little history about Civita de Bagna Reggio is maybe how you spell it in my bad, or say it in my bad Italian, but it is the ultimate hill town. We've been to several of those, but this one is connected to the mainland in a very special way. Check it out. So back in its heyday, Chivita was the place to be, and the town down below, it was just the suburbs. Now you can see why everyone wanted to live up there. It's beautiful, but time and erosion started to take their toll, and then an earthquake pretty much scared a lot of people out of town. The picturesque city on a hill dates back thousands of years, but today it's more of a tourist town with very few residents. You'll pay a small entrance fee, climb up the long path, and step back in time into a village featuring a 7th century church and the remains of Renaissance palaces. An earthquake in 1695 pushed many people to more stable ground. 
and the continued erosion and landslides have literally dropped homes into the valley below. Take a look over the edge to see where part of these once grand buildings are now missing. So people continued living in Chavita until the last generation. But that walkway you see, it was actually bombed out in World War II, and the new one was built in the 1960s. We just walked back, and I don't know how people lived there. It would be really, really tough. left Chavita, which was our last stop for the day, and now we're driving to our final destination of this trip, unfortunately, of Rome. Like I said earlier today, we picked up, or we traded a rental car with our friends, and they hopped on the train to head north to Cinque Terre, and then on to Switzerland, which we're very jealous of. So we took the car and we're taking it back to Rome. Um, thankfully, they rented it on the outskirts of Rome actually from an Ikea building, so it should be easy to find, and we don't have to drive into Rome. So it should hopefully make for an easy return, and then we'll just use um, buses and metros to find our way to our Airbnb. Actually, this time we booked um, an apartment through booking.com, and it looks pretty nice with a great location. So the rain seems to have passed for a minute, but it's definitely not gone. But we're gonna hope for smooth driving the rest of the way and a smooth transition to our final apartment. Come on, Marie. You gotta get away. You gotta get away. So there hasn't been very much video from tonight, mainly because it has been a very wet, long night. As you can probably tell from the state that my hair is currently in. And my lovely hairstyle here. As we drove back into Rome to drop off our rental car, it started to rain cats and dogs. Just constant downpour of rain. And in theory, we decided to use a Hertz location on the outskirts of Rome. It was kind of at a mall, and we thought it would be easy to drop it there, hop on, mass transit, get to the city center, and not have to worry about driving. But once we dropped off our car, we could not find that transit. And Google wasn't doing very good at helping us. Yeah, and of course it was raining cats and dogs the entire time and we had all of our luggage with us. So it made for a trying afternoon. But we eventually made it to our um, booking.com apartment, which is quite nice and has an amazing location. So now we're just drying out and unfortunately eating a little frozen pizza here in Rome. Not my idea of the best dinner option for Italy, but for tonight it will do. I do have to say that frozen pizza tasted better than a lot of frozen pizzas that I've had in the U.S. But yeah, it is still really raining and the closest restaurants were about 10, 10 minutes away or so and... Uh, we did not feel like getting soaked to the bone once again. Darren was nice enough to go grab some groceries for us. That's the low point of our day, but the high point was, of course, seeing Chavita, which was something that was on my bucket list for a very, very long time. I think I had seen it on an episode of The Amazing Race a few years back, and I didn't think that some place that looks like that could be real. Googled it, found it, and have wanted to go there for years, and it is stunning like it's just incredible to see that people lived up there and that just a few people seem to be holding on or running hotels and airbnbs and accommodations like that yeah we had a great lunch up there it was worth getting wet the second half of the day to detour to see chavita because it's just a spectacular site that most likely won't be there forever so uh yeah this is a, a great thing to see that was probably once in a lifetime for us hopefully there's supposed to be less rain tomorrow. 
that we'll be able to get out and explore some of Rome. We've had eight hours in Rome about five years ago on our honeymoon, so we're excited to go back and do Rome at a much slower pace. And like Darren said, our booking.com apartment is really nice and it's about a block from the Colosseum. So we were soaked, super hungry, kind of in a bad mood from being left in the rain for hours. And we get off the train and the Colosseum and the Forum were right there. And so once it's daylight and I'm dry, I know I'm gonna be super excited. Yeah, sorry we don't have too many shots of the process. It would have been a, a nice um, thing to journal with video. Um, the frustrations that we encountered today just that you know, can sometimes come with part of travel. But uh, most of our efforts were devoted to making sure our good camera stayed dry so our hands were full with those things rather than being able to get the GoPro out to, uh, to take you along with us through that adventure. The moral of the story is don't rent a car in Rome. There's a train that goes to Orvieto, which is about an hour, hour and a half north of Rome. You can rent a car there, so it may have been wiser to just take the train to Orvieto, pick up the car out in the country, and head on to there. So we've learned a good travel lesson, and now we can tell other people. I think we're gonna call it a night. We've had our pizza and some salad without salad dressing. <laughs> we're gonna eat some good food tomorrow. I think on a food tour. Yep. So, good night.